a political consultant. I just want to get the money from point A to point B. A shell company. Your guy took care of business right away. Yes, I just, Steve. I, I okay. just knew it took Turkey um, out through Belize, and, I'm, and I just wanted to make sure that, that that got to you. So good, I'm glad. An eccentric West Coast millionaire. Smaller checks to begin with, but I definitely could see my I definitely could see myself being a larger contributor. An English money man. We have banks in the banks in Belize. The one in Belize we just used for the first time with your transfer. Twenty thousand dollars sent from an offshore bank in Belize. I think we know that it's coming. We need some up front. And then mysteriously returned. All the ingredients of a spy thriller, but in fact were the elements we used for our undercover operation to investigate the Hillary Clinton campaign. The investigation ultimately led us to Robert Creamer, a Democratic power broker who knows the White House like the back of his hand. I've known the president since he was a community organizer in Chicago. Every morning, I'm on a call at 1030 that goes over the message being driven by the, by the campaign headquarters. I do a lot of work with the White House. The Project Veritas action investigation into the Clinton campaign took us more than a year. We had people working for the Clinton campaign full time across the country. We even had someone working for a time inside the Clinton campaign headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. We had people posing as donors, political consultants, interns, overseas financial advisors, and activists. I can't stress with you guys enough how badly they need that money. <laughs> so I'm basically Deputy Rapid Response Director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. You know, Brad and Bob and Lux and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We need to win this motherfucker. Um, so Bob is really good friends with him <laughs> and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. In April, we started uncovering the aggressive bird dogging that was secretly done by the Clinton campaign. It's an underhanded nationwide operation to foment violence at Trump rallies. The aggressive bird dogging. That comes with the media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the engagement. What I, what I call it is conflict engagement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, that's, your, that's your version of reenfranchisement. Conflict in, in, in the lines at Trump rallies. We're starting anarchy here. We were also gathering growing evidence that the Clinton campaign was violating the federal election campaign coordination laws. In the end, it was the candidate, Hillary Clinton, the, new, the, the future president of the United States, who wanted ducks on the ground. So by God, we will give ducks on the ground. And, oh, uh, so it's... Wow. Don't, don't repeat that tape. Don't repeat that tape. Scott Fovel gave us a primer on how to commit massive voter fraud. We did spam when we were in charge too. So what did we do? We did the exact same thing. Only we we manipulated the vote with money and action, not with laws. It's a very easy thing for Republicans to say, well, they're busting people in. Well, you know what? We've been busting people in, the deep fucking asshole, for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. We're just going to find a different way to do it. Um, so Bob is really good friends with him, mm -hmm. and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in, if we can get 25 grand, they're all in to do their piece. Creamer, Fovel, and Americans United for Change President Brad Woodhouse sent us numerous proposals to further their efforts, and they were asking for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I need to know from you folks that if I decide to do this, what is your drop dead date for if I do it, when, you know, at what level, and mm -hmm. uh, when do you need to a commitment from me? I mean, I think by the end of this month, because you know, we look at this as basically a September 15th ish okay. thing to the or September 22nd, you know, I'm thinking, um, so we want to be on the road by the time most of early voting has, has started, okay. uh, and we want, to, we want to go close to the end. Okay, because uh, I'll have to work with the trust, it's, you know, do you need an upfront, can we do it in installments, or? I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think if we know that it's coming, we need some upfront, because we just, you know, um, 
Yeah, no, we're, we, we're, we're a C4, but we're basically a campaign organization. We spend money that comes in to try to get the job done. So we're, we're not sitting on a reserve to right. do this type of thing. So we raise oh. and spend as, as it comes. Okay. You know, as it comes in. So we would need something up front. And we're, look, we're, we're, we're looking at other, we're looking at other sources. We knew we were onto something important for the American people to know. However, our story was not complete. With the election looming, we were running out of time, and the people inside the campaign's dark effort were growing impatient with our cover story. It was all about the money. I, I can't stress with you guys enough how badly they need that money. <laughs> Charles Roth III was an invention. He was the rich donor we invented who said he wanted to make a difference and stop Trump. This is a phone call he made to Robert Creamer in June. I can tell you right off the bat, Rob, that, that you know, I see the rise of Donald Trump right now in the United States as an extremely scary thing. Me too. To prove the credibility of our donor and keep our investigation going, we made the tough decision to donate $20,000 to Robert Creamer's effort. We had determined that the benefit of this investigation outweighed the cost. First thing is, I'd, like I said, thank you for the proposal, and I'd like to get the 20000 across to you. Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to, the second call I'm going to make here is to my money guy, and he's going to get in touch with you on how to wire the funds to you. Okay, we are running out of time, as you know, so we need to do it quick. Yeah. Also, there were some ideas that have been relayed to me from Steve that Scott mentioned to him about Trump events, that I would like to talk about those events as well. No, Trump events is fine. I mean, I, I, frankly, I spend most of my time overseeing the Trump events around the country. I mean, they, that's what I do. And for the Clinton <laughs> Um, the, um, so that's interesting as well. He told us to send the check to Americans United for Change. Americans United for Change is one of our clients, right? Mm -hmm. It's a C4 that is, uh, you know, it was originally set up to do, uh, to lead the battle to stop the privatization of Social Security. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. They've been, they used to be located here, but they now are mostly on Massachusetts Avenue. But I'm their general consultant. Bob Creamer was listed as AUFC's general consultant until our stories about their shady activities were released. Now his name is nowhere to be found. Roth's English money man sent an email to Creamer asking where to wire the funds. Creamer sent our guy AUFC's bank information. It was earlier this year that we purchased a shell company called Repulse Bay Limited. It was incorporated in Belize, Central America in 2005. It was nothing more than this piece of paper. Next, we opened a bank account in Belize so we could move money around the world anonymously. This is typically the actions of drug dealers and tax-dodging white-collar criminals. We used it as a cover. Hello, Bob. It's Charles. There you are. Hey, Charles. Hey. How you doing? Okay. Uh, I'm just checking in. See um, um, where things are from your point of view. And uh, um, Actually, I was thinking we might want to set up a time to... Have a call with you and I and Scott. If you want Steve Packard on, that's fine too. I would um, like, I would like to do that. A um, couple of logistical things beforehand. I, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit peeved that I haven't heard back from you guys about the Carlson money transfer. Did that go through okay? I'm just getting back on this time zone myself, and I want to make sure that that came in okay. Oh yes, of course it did, and I'm sorry if I uh, I thought I thought I had gotten back, and, uh, and thank you for that. I apologize. Yes, it came through. No it problem. Came through in a timely way. Your guy, your guy took care of business right away. Yes, I just, indeed. I, I okay. just knew it took tricky um, route through Belize, and I'm and I just wanted to make sure that 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 got to you. So good. I'm glad. I'm glad. The money definitely helped. Shortly after the funds were released, Charles Roth's niece, our journalist got offered an internship at Creamer's firm, Democracy Partners. This is uh, Angela Brandt. She's been working with me until the election. Oh, nice. Well, welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. We also arranged another meeting with Scott Fovel, who was even more expansive about what he was willing to help Roth do. He really wants to get his hands dirty. He can get dirty. Yeah. He wants to get dirty, we can get dirty. And Fovel set us up to meet Cesar Vargas, quote, the guy who can get things done, unquote. What's the goal of the overall campaign? Yeah, and yeah, for me as an attorney, like, yeah, this is easy, well, this is something like that. I assume you don't go off and have this conversation and say that. No, no, no. Because no. this is... No, absolutely, absolutely. So, no. In an effort to see how far these guys would go with the promise of more money, Roth's money man, Michael Carlson, requested a meeting with Creamer. 
Carlson said he was looking for an immigration lawyer with powerful connections for a wealthy client in Syria who wanted to live in the U.S. Making the phone call and we're going to record it. I just need to, I will try and find a couple of good referrals to you and get back to you pretty quick then, okay? Fabulous. Um, and um, one, one of the, on the first, well, I'll just talk to, yeah, I'm going to talk to first to see if this is up his alley. The first thing is up his alley is uh, the guy who ran the campaign for President Obama. He has a firm that's uh, pretty well connected. Creamer gave the recommendation to our journalist and made it clear the connections he could make if we delivered yet another donor. Hang on for a second. I got to send something to the uh, Clinton campaign real quick. Here's what I do with the Clinton campaign, by the way. I'm a consultant to the Clinton campaign. Wherever Trump or Pence go in the country, we make sure that there are press events in the TV market or whatever, mm -hmm. television market, or in the press events, whether they're big turnouts or little turnouts, whatever, that drive our message wherever the candidate goes to drive his message. So that in any given day, they will be between them in probably six places. So our team makes sure there are events in all those six places every day. So it's a lot of events. Uh, and we try and help define the other candidate. Creamer was not shy about how much access he has to the Clinton's campaign staff on a daily basis. Every morning, I'm going to call at 1030 that goes over the message being driven by the by the campaign headquarters. I'm I'm in this campaign mainly deal with what you know, earned media, with uh, television, radio, <coughs> with yeah. earned media and social media, not with. Uh, paid media, not with advertising. So it'll be a whole different advertising apparatus. Everybody's driven on the same tracks, though. So uh, and then there are a couple bunch of people in the Brooklyn office uh, that are responsible for lots of different aspects of communication. We do rapid response. And there's a guy there I work with heavily. It's the guy I'm just communicating with. On well, that kind of stuff, for instance, we just found, I just sent him a note beforehand when we came here that said my understanding is there might be another revelation of a, another woman talking about Although Trump, Donald Trump this afternoon and, and he just sent me back a note that says is it this lawyer that's going to do that I said I think maybe it could be something else I'll try and find out Creamer bragged that he talks to the campaign every day and can contact them at any time and it's not just the Clintons that he has access to Creamer also makes it clear that he is well connected to President Obama Critics of our earlier stories have suggested that Creamer isn't as well connected as we reported, that he is just the husband of Chicago Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. We beg to differ. According to White House visitor logs, Creamer visited the White House 342 times since 2009, 47 of those times with Obama. But it's Creamer's own words that confirm our reporting. Well, Barack Obama was, was the best campaign in the history of American politics. I mean, the second one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one was good, too. I've been, I was consultant to both. The second one was the, everything hit on every level, every aspect. How, how does he do it still? I mean, he never makes a mistake when he's giving a presentation. He's consistent as possible. Uh, I mean, more consistent than a scientific experiment. He's a pro. Um, sure I've known the president since he was a community organizer in Chicago. Creamer thinks our journalist is connected to large donors and is not shy about the access he can give, but for a price, of course. Money for access. I need to meet him. Okay. <laughs> you may have a lot more opportunity once he's done. In 99, 98 days, something like that, 97. Yeah, cool. So when do you got to go back? I was just at an event with him in Chicago, actually, on Friday last. <clears throat> um, he's just... As good as ever. He's, uh, I, I do a lot of work with the White House on their issue, helping to run issue campaigns that they've been involved in. I mean, uh, for immigration reform, for, for the, for the health care. Thank you so much.
for the health care bill for the uh, for the, for the uh, you like some pepper hand on? Yes, please. For the uh, enjoy. Do you think you pepper? For thank you. Mm -hmm. Try and make America more like Britain when it comes to gun violence issues. Uh, I was talking to a lady uh, who's here in the U.S. She's a real, uh, she's very wealthy, uh, lives in Atlanta, has uh, plenty of money, and is interested in making a donation to the inauguration. Okay. Totally. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> your person would rather give to the inaugural than she would to the campaign. That's what she said. She likes bosses, I guess. Okay. Yes. That really interests her. She'd love to meet me at some point. Okay. Um, I'm sure that could be arranged. And um, uh, how do you want to proceed to... Uh, from, how should I proceed here? I'll get back to her. I'll tell her and she can call you. Okay. Or, or I'll call you back. That's fine. And we'll set up a meeting. We'll you got you gotta tell me how much she should be donating because we don't know. I will talk to I'll talk to uh, I'll talk to somebody in the campaign and find out the best fundraising place to interface. I mean there's mm -hmm. a, and uh, um and she's an American citizen, so she can do that. Oh yeah, I assume that if she lived in Atlanta. I shouldn't have, I suppose, but I did. Um, okay. Let me know as soon as you can, and I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make it happen. Our investment had paid off. The story was solid. Creamer, Fovel, Jenna Price from the DNC. Brad Woodhouse from AUFC, Caesar Vargas, and others had opened the door to their smoke-filled rooms of illegal and dirty campaign dealings. This year is a particularly interesting year because it's the first year the DNC has had these big additional limits. And then we were stunned by a totally unexpected twist. Brad Woodhouse, the president of AUFC, the folks we had sent the money to, heard that we were releasing undercover videos exposing their activities. Woodhouse told a journalist that AUFC was going to return the $20,000. He was concerned it might have been an illegal foreign donation. We were happy to get the wire transfer showing the $20,000 was returned, but we wondered why it wasn't a problem for the previous month that Woodhouse had the money.